Could catnip become the new DEET? Well, after you review the research with me or I, you'd be quite amazed that not only is catnip's effect solid on mosquitoes, but it is also it ha- impacts a huge number of invertebrates, especially of the bug world, which you'll see while not having the same impact on vertebrates, i.e. humans. But to proceed as follows, uh, before I begin, this gives you a great example real fast and real briefly on the difference between a public release and a full study, which is more technical in nature. The graphic you see to my right, that's the public release graphic. The graphic I'm pre- presenting to you now, that's the technical graphic. But to proceed as follows, because uh, I'm going to bounce back and forth between the public and the full study. Sometimes the full study says it's best. Sometimes the public study says it best. So I like to take whichever one explains it the, uh, the most directly so we can yield the best outcome as far as understanding of the research in particular. So let us proceed as follows. Could catnip become the new DEET? The common plant shows promise as a new natural insect repellent. New should really not be the word there because it's more of a rediscovery. And if you look at catnip, it's been used as an insect repellent for millennia. Just that somehow through ancestral hubris, we blew it off, but now we are rediscovering it. To proceed, often use an additive for cat toys and treats due to your fork and loose genogenic effect on cats. Catnip has also been known for its powerful repellent action on insects, mosquitoes in particular. Recent research shows catnip compounds be as least, at least, as effective as synthetic insect repellents such as deep. But until now, the mechanism that triggered insect's aversion to this common member of the mint family was unknown. In the paper published this March 4th in the current journal of biology, a team of researchers from Northwestern and Lund universities report the findings that for the underlying receptors that contribute to the mosquito's aversive reaction. Before we go into exactly how it works, I want to go into the backstory from the full study to show you why uh, observationally it has been so treasured in reference to as an insect repellent. Again, Clinical studies validate it to make sure there's no other correlation, but this gives you a little bit of the history, the historical background to proceed. The Eurasian herb catnip, Nepeticateria, is well known for its euphoric and hallucinogenic effects on cats. The plant has, moreover, a long history of use in herbal medicine, possibly dating back to the late Neolithic period. Pliny the Elder, otherwise known as Gaius Plinius uh, Cecilius Secundus, yeah, uh, mentions many medicinal uses in the peta and it's his, his naturalist. Historia. And the 9th century Ball's Leech Book. Remember about three or four years ago, um, it was basically Notre Dame University, uh, Nottingham University, where Ball's Eye Solve was discovered in Ball's Leech Book, outperformed today's strongest antibiotics. So often what happens is we're rediscovering elements that were at one time too prideful to look back upon. To proceed as follows. Ball's Leech Book reports catnip as ineffective against everything from bedevilment, mixed leaves, catnip with ale and chant 12 masses, clinical studies, to shoulder pain, pound leaves and ale, drink by fire. Although many or most of these claimed curative properties remain to be verified or refuted, uh, confirm or deny, catnip does not seem to have a pause, does seem to have, forgive me, a positive influence on human well-being producing a soothing and calming sensation. To invertebrates, operative word there. However, catnip is likely to appear less benign. As many insect toxins react with avoidance when confronted with its extracts, this well-known property of catnip explains the long history of its use as an insect repellent. For example, Johannes Frank's Speculum Botanicum from 1638, the first comprehensive botanical work from Sweden, catnip is mentioned as as a luskodas, luskodo, please forgive me for my pronunciation, a name also later used by Carl von Linn, luskodas, can be loosely translated into lice grass, pleasant sounding, where lice likely refers to all pesky small creatures, alluding to it as an insect repellent. Before I proceed with the technical explanation, here is a picture from the full study itself onto the broad range of insects that catnip has an effect upon, at least the ones discovered or known. There we have it. Now, hopefully this video records in 4K so you can freeze it and look at basically everything it impacts. 
definitely, definitely something to have in a war chest if you're bringing on a picnic or wherever it is, or, oh gosh, a bit, uh, traveling to other parts of the world, which unfortunately at this point in time need to rediscover catnip, especially with mosquito pandemic mitigation uh, scenarios not being as good as they should at this point in time. That's the picture. Now to go into basically the public study to explain why catnip does what it does. Because, again, it's the easiest in the explanation and also to you understand how it works. Bottom line. Catnip and its active ingredient, the petaloctone, have been used for millennia to ward off insect pests, at least since the time we already went through, Planet of the Elder, da 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 uh, uh, Marcus, the researcher. But why catnip is so potent on such a broad range, that was just so a few seconds ago, of insect species has remained unknown. Traditional approaches to mosquito control involved insecticides, but those eliminate other insect species as collateral damage. Modern formulation of insect repellents such as D-target mos mosquito odor and taste receptors, rendering the insect incapable of recognizing the chemical cues that signal a human play. Prey. This is how it works. This part's amazing. Quoting the researchers, and this is uh, Stensmere. Again, forgive me if I mispronounce. We discovered that catnip and its active ingredient, nepetaloctone, activates the irrit irrit irritant receptor TRPA1. Remember the graphic from earlier? An ancient pain receptor found in animals as diverse as flatworms, fruit flies, and humans, said Marco Gallio, an associate professor in neurobiology at Weinberg College of Arts and Sciences. Quote, we now think catnip is so aversive to so many insect species because it activates this widespread irritant receptor. In previous work, the Galileo, the Galileo, forgive me, Galileo lab and others demonstrated humans, insects, and many other ma animal species possess a version of this transient receptor potential anchorin 1 or TRPA1 ion channel, a protein best known as the wasabi receptor that senses environmental irritants like pain and itch. What is particularly interesting is that unlike wasabi or garlic compounds that also activate these receptors in humans, catnip appears to selectively activate the insect receptor. This explains why humans are indifferent to catnip and provides a serious advantage for its use as a repellent. By activating that pain receptor, so to say, in insects, is what they're alluding to, they have a massive aversion to it. It hurts. Humans, basically walking around, catnip, barely notice it. Insects, like the picture I'm about to show again, massive aversion. Again, like wasabi, with the burning effect. But to proceed as follows, goes, the researchers studied various insect species to better understand how catnip and its active ingredient to work and repel a broad range of insects while having no irritant effect on humans. To confirm the results, which we just covered, to confirm the results, the team ran a range of tests, including offering mosquitoes a blood meal and a dish covered with a nylon sock, doused in catnip, pleasant, experiments involving wind tunnel, as well as an experiment in which volunteers placed their hand in a cage with live mosquitoes. Volunteers. With or without the protection of catnip oil rub. Gal Galileo, Galileo believes that the mechanism they discovered also provides proof of concept for the development of next generation repellents repellents that exploit the same logic, selectively targeting the mosquito irritant receptor. So basically working upon what our ancestors discovered to try to improve. This quote, this is an entry point to see how this molecule works on the receptor. Once we understand its chemistry and how it interacts with the receptor, we could design even more powerful and selectively targeted molecules. Again, the conclusion of the public release. The team's next project Finding out how to get rid of the cats that keep chasing them down. Public conclusion. Technical conclusion. <laughs> Our team demonstrates how catnip irritoids function as powerful natural insect repellents because they activate the insect TRPA1, an ancient receptor for noxious and irritant chemicals, explaining at once catnip's powerful aversive reaction or effect in its broad spectrum of insect targets. Further experiments will reveal the molecular mechanism behind the selective activation of some, but not all, TRPA1 variants. Yet the fact that catnip activates a number of insect TRPA1 variants combined with the observation that catnip appears ineffective towards vertebrate, i.e. humans, TRPA1, and human in particular, supports the notion that this property may be further exploited, I'm working on old 
our ancestors' research, to design a class of observation, or even a group of selected insect repellents. So that is an amazing aspect of catnip, just to get to rediscover a new respect for catnip itself. Often, many of us, from a basically a, a mere observation away, we always basically revert to if we're having a picnic or whatever it is, citronella. But now, knowing the impact of catnip on a broad range of insects can really eclipse a lot of not only some of the natural synthetic uh, natural pesticides out there, but even the stronger synthetic ones in a very, very, I should say, healthier and a least harmful way. So basically, if you can't use DEET or whatever it is, or even not, if you can, if catnip outperforms it, then all because it's natural. Doesn't mean it's not as good. In this case, catnip is even better. For researchers in the future, they can isolate the compounds, see if they make it stronger, they don't have to use as much. Great, more power to them. But from this case on, plenty of the elder, great observation. And thus, as Pliny's ancestors, rediscovering what he already knew millennia ago. Again, we're off to our channel, signing off. Gratitude, thank you for watching. I look forward to see you all once again next week or Saturday night. You'll be joining us for our data analytic part in reference to pandemic mitigation. Catch you all next time. See you then. Bye.